what's going to be interesting about this, by the way, I'm on my phone, so I won't be pulling up a presentation, but Marty, if you could share the link to the pitch deck, because it has a lot of information. Uh, what's interesting we'll is do. not so much that I look like Mr. Potato, what's interesting is that the technology that we have now uh, solves the problem for uh, surface transmission of uh, MRSA and COVID and other hospital acquired infections and that we have created a technology that kills MRSA and COVID and other pathogens in six seconds. So we have a complete product line of uh, door levers, pulls, pushes, panic bars, railings, light switches, shopping cart handles. And we've been uh, working with uh, some strategic partners in Europe and in discussions with, uh, with uh, Signify, that's the largest uh, lighting manufacturer in the world, and we also have a, an evolving uh, partnership with the, the manufacturer that puts 70% of door hardware in hospitals. Um, we anticipate in the Netherlands will be in the second largest hospital there the first quarter of 2022. And what's kind of interesting is that we actually have overcome the obstacle to making this happen. So one of the big problems we see is that over a million people, unfortunately, are lost to pathogens around the world from hospital-acquired infections each year. It's a $200 billion problem to address and mitigate already, and they don't have a solution. We found that the largest uh, global suppliers are at about 90 seconds for sterilization, we're at six. And, and we moved it, and we have a backup from that with Boston University who did a study using our components and showed that it kills COVID and it kills MRSA in six seconds. So what I'm looking to do is to uh, make strategic partnerships and look into uh, VC and uh, equity arrangements so that we can make a bridge into our next stage. We're really series A, B. We have market ready products and we're right now receiving the specs in order to make our products fit with this other huge manufacturer so that they can then assemble and put them in the hospital into hospitals. There is also a retail market. There's the commercial market. And I think both of them are quite large. Right now we're focused on commercial in six months, I think will be retail and that will be uh, Home Depot and Alibaba and Walmart, et cetera. I saw on the other, um, I thought I could turn the camera around, but I would like to show you some of the products because I have the real products right here. And also anybody that wants to weigh in or ask questions or interrupt me, I'm very much a big fan of that. And I have a little cheat sheet here, which is hilarious since I'm a huge computer guy. But uh, basically we have uh, seven patents. It's a breakthrough technology. Uh, top engineers from the largest C companies have been extremely impressed and have actually mentored me. So we also see it in cruise ships, corporate retail. Uh, we have a great sales funnel. Um, we look at existing sterilization methods and they're using these pulse generators and things, but you can't use those when people are in a room. You can't turn them on every third second, hoping people will leave a room and you can't spray and wipe and you can't use these external sensors. So ours come from within devices and I'm gonna walk you over and show you some samples that uh, hopefully will be visible. Here you can see, I think you can see, yeah, this one here uh, has more of our uh, frosted finish. So it hides the tech, which is kind of nice. And this one up here is uh, hopefully, yep, it's hooked up and hopefully you can see the LED spinning in there. Only 4% of UVC LED is actually visible to the eye. And we actually have twice as many of our newer models of that. Over here, we have a uh, standard rocker switch, which has been modified, and that's our UVC rocker switch. It doesn't have the frosted finish on it so that you can see what it's doing. And it's also, we've staged it so you can see them coming on and off. And here would be one with a frosted finish. And then this over here is where we use an RF4 flex board, and we're able to take an existing switch and with two screws, we can put a battery powered sterilization process to work and it only takes six seconds. 
Uh, that one has really large batteries. The new uh, one that we are making now has much smaller batteries, but they're still pretty great. So uh, any questions or anything like that, uh, Marty, or everybody go to lunch? So, so tell me about your distribution and how you're getting it and uh, you know where you guys are. I, th I think you said, you said that you're at the distribution stage of this product and and also like any kind of intellectual property you know who's co-invested with you how much has been invested to date etc yeah i put about 400 in myself so i'm the sole owner of uh, polarity medical llc at this time you know my thought is i think standard vc is about 20 percent, so i'd be open to that i'd also be open to percentages of that because it's it's not that we have to be radically funded right now uh, just reasonably funded I think that we're probably in the 40 to 60 million, but I would, you know, be willing to consider various things because right now it's about a bridge mostly. Um, we're looking at our distribution right now is going to be based on OEM for one of the largest uh, global manufacturers of door hardware for hospitals. And then they're going to assemble it into their stainless steel and use our technology and go ahead and place it in the hospitals right now. The first hospitals, uh, University Medical Center in the Netherlands. And that looks uh, very good so far. Um, we anticipate that once it hits the hospitals, it's gonna really become globally known by hospitals because the problem is this touch transmission problem in hospitals is different than what we see with COVID where yes, touch transmission is important, but it's also a lot of airborne. In hospitals, we see that no matter what they try to do, they can't get personnel to wash their hands before they go into the rooms. And it only takes four hours for half of an office to be infected from one germy doorknob anywhere in any office. And that's why we think for flus, colds, and viruses, that we're going to see it in a lot of commercial applications, cruise ships, and hospitality, uh, corporate, and all that. Um, the other side to it is that we are just now getting ready to do Kickstarter, and that's so that we can also up for the rest of retail, because it takes about six months to get your approvals for Home Depot, Walmart, and to get on Alibaba, have everything integrated with chatbots to do most of the communication and all the drop shipping and all that. We have a fantastic uh, contract uh, manufacturer, which is a Canadian guy who moved to China about 10 years ago and has produced thousands of electronic products. And they're doing an amazing job. So it looks like uh, we're gonna come in at a really good value, which will make it affordable. Hey, Matt, for Andy Weiss, hope you're well. Oh. Hey, I am calling to uh, Andy, say hello. You, I am One second. presenting on a uh, family office webinar at three. So I'm literally just sitting here and prepping my notes. And well, uh, why don't you come on to our I call, Andy? And I'll set. I left my house. I'm sitting at uh, Shulman Rogers office at Park. Oh, well, they're gone. So, so uh, how much at... are you raising again? Uh, well, what, what I'm looking to do is to uh, raise between one and four million right now. And uh, that will more than carry us for where we need to go. We don't really need inventory for the OEM or even for our other commercial sales because everything's done with 50% uh, with purchase uh, orders. So it's not like we just have to come up with volumes of cash in order to be able to fund that, which is really nice. Uh, Kickstarter, of course, is self-funding. And then also when we do retail, there'll be some funding, but the numbers on those products are not as huge as, for instance, uh, when you look at the hospital and they want a three-month battery. So by the way, we know- Are, the there, are there regulatory aspects to Kickstarter? I'm gonna let you get back into what you were talking about, but can you talk about any regulatory aspects of Kickstarter, which are different than just doing a regular raise? Well, it, as far as Kickstarter goes, uh, the the raises are, uh, I think, one or 1.5 million, and that's capped. And then if you change your status, which is about six months, then you can go up to 60 million. But that's not going to happen on Kickstarter anyway. And really, Kickstarter is just a great way for more people to know about the retail side and to go ahead and, and jump in uh, while we have the extra time there as we okay. develop. So, so, so the people who buy it, they're doing pre-orders, and they pay you 50% up front. Are you able to do financing on the inventory as well? I mean, because you know, obviously inventory financing, there's lots of people who will lend on inventory if you have a buyer. Have you thought about that or are you considering that? Yeah, I think we can. I think we can, but by having them prepay really, because it's, it's the 50% that they put down, that really takes care of all of our costs. And then really we're looking at profit for the company and 
uh, with the other 50% uh, upon delivery. So that's a pretty great situation because it doesn't put us in a bind. Where's the product manufactured? Uh, right now we're doing it in China, although our engineers uh, are here and uh, they're the same engineers, by the way, who did the Disney lightsabers, those really sophisticated with accelerometers and radios in them that they use in the movie and then they're, uh, you know, but they've also done dozens of UVC devices. And one of the great things is that I've established relationships with the CEOs and lead engineers of a lot of the top UVC companies around the globe and several here in the U.S. And they were really excited about it. They helped to mentor me. Our chemist was uh, at 3M in charge of their UV program for 30 years. So our data is spot on. And basically we're looking at six seconds, six seconds to sterilize. So you walk up and it uh, senses that you've touched it. And then when you move a bit, it comes on for six seconds. It's ready for the next person. And that's really quite phenomenal. It's something that has not been done by any other company. And our technology, uh, one of the things I've done is I've managed to cut down on the necessary expensive UVC LEDs by three quarters and carry out in six seconds. That brings us down by 87% on peak amperage needed. And that allowed us to do a battery solution that Signify does not have. And they're the largest lighting manufacturer in the world. And we know it from the horse's mouth. It's not. Oh, so what kind of batteries are you talking about? Like, uh, you know, double A or rechargeables or what? Yeah, they're, they're just like, they're, they're, they're rechargeables. Uh, you could use a non-rechargeable, but it's better to use rechargeable. Some of nine volt batteries. And they look like uh, they'd be like uh, four A's. They're just a little bit larger. And then we're also working on changing that to something flatter. But that's for anyone. Take two screws, change your, your door lever. And if you want, we also have proprietary and, you know, it's with our patents, concealed wiring, which transfers the power across the door jam. So you could hardwire. Uh, they don't want to do that in the hospitals. They want to have a three month battery, which is 100,000 cycles per year. We've achieved it. It's really great. They're at 90 seconds to sterilize from the biggest corporations and they have no battery solution. And because of our technology, which they can't duplicate, we are able to provide battery solutions and you can have this three month battery on the door or use our concealed wiring and just have it on the wall, pull it out and change it and that's it. But what's the intellectual property on your technology? Is it patents, is it trade secrets, what is it? Uh, it's patents. I, I think trade secrets sound great but they also sound like once they're discovered they're no longer secrets. And so it's better to have a, a patent as far as I'm concerned. Um, I also think that it's a fairly regulated market and uh, there's a lot of protection there too, but also we're global and that gives us protection even in China, which actually has some pretty strong uh, IP laws. And um, when we met with this other large uh, corporation that we're not announcing yet, that's doing the deal with the hospitals in the Netherlands, um, I expected that their IP guy, who's their global IP guy, and our global, I, I thought he was gonna try and tear our, our patents apart. Instead, he said, you know, we only want the door levers, but I think we should buy everything and then just sell what we don't want. So we kind of have, you know, we're going back and forth a little bit, but it looks really, really good. And I think that it's fair to project that uh, under the stewardship and strategic partnership or M&A of some of these large global corporations, that we'd be in excess of a billion dollars within three to five years. So whether we'll be there or not, I don't know, I'm committed to everything and anything, but it also has to do with what maybe somebody wants to run with. As long as it's implemented properly and everybody who's involved is compensated and cared for. What kind of margins are you looking at? Uh, well, we're looking at about 65% uh, margins. And um, it depends on which products we're selling to because we have some that can be uh, uh, like sort of an economy thing and yet still durable, effective and easy to install. And then we have some for the hospital grade with those big, uh, with those big batteries and all. And we're looking at that margin. And then also we think, you know, as we get to economies of scale, that we'll make more and they'll also save more. Have so you thought about licensing the technology? I mean, you know, sometimes you'll find backers, like I know an India family office, I would say, sure, if we can share on the licensing revenue for India, you know, they'll put money into it, things like that. Have you thought about anything like that or? It's funny because uh, one of the mentors is the lead engineer for one of the biggest is an Indian guy. And I speak about 500 words of Marathi from Maharashtra province. 
and love India. But uh, yeah, I think that that's really important. And I think it's uh, how you know everybody gets included in that. And licensing is a big one. And what we see is the, the reason for this OEM is basically we're talking about Benelux, which is Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg sure. is where they want to start us in the hospitals. But they're really trying to convince their French unit who they want to do the manufacturing of it. And so at that point, I'm pretty sure that we pretty much be M&A or licensing, which everybody, of course, benefits. And then myself and my European colleague, by the way, my European colleague was a sales manager for Europe for Signify for 25 years. And he was also the head of their UV department. And so he has personal relationships with many of these people who are at Philips Medical, who are at Signify, who are at Asa Bloy, and some of the others that are the biggest. And uh, that's a lot easier than for me to walk in the door. It doesn't matter how great the idea is, because there's a lot of people watching right now who have the capacity to jump in, uh, whether it tickles their fancy or not, you don't know. And when you have a personal relationship with someone, then they kind of hear you even at a deeper level. But right now, what we're looking at is, it's pretty much our market and we need to develop it. I won't be doing it alone. I will be doing it in partnership, strategic alliances, and also uh, with licensing. And why should we not do that? By the way, I'd like to move some of the manufacturing to uh, Vietnam and to India and some other countries. I still want our Chinese partners, you know, they're hardworking and great people to thrive. I'd like to see uh, a more spread out basis for manufacturing for the world. I think we could do that. So um, you shared my pitch deck. You shared my pitch deck. I shared it. Yep. And uh, my contact information, I'd love to hear from anybody with your creative ideas and thoughts, and perhaps we can work together. We're going to forward, but it's nice if we get uh, somebody to jump in and help with the bridge a little bit. Tom, Tom, there's a lot of positives about what you're doing. You know, you've uh, obviously got skin in the game as well, and uh, you've given a lot of thought about how you're approaching the market. So um, we're going to recircuit your documents at the end of this as well. Uh, So we'll talk to you later. Thanks so much. Okay, much appreciated. Thanks for anybody who hung in there.